out. Bring out the gimp. I think the gimp's sleeping. Well, I guess you just have to go wake him up now, won't you? Welcome to the weekend edition of the Trade Devil's Bitcoin Bull Bear Series. A couple of quick reminders, please follow us on Twitter where you can be notified of uh, any content releases from Trade Devils. That's at Trade Devils, plural. Uh, or you can check us out on our public Discord. There's a link to an invitation there on all of our more recent videos on the YouTube profile. Last week we reviewed the impact, the very significant impact of the new low uh, around here of last weekend on all the likely Elliott wave counts. And we did a bunch of them. Uh, if you remember, there were two families of possibilities. One was that the X wave was already in as a short zigzag here, or as a triangle, A, B, C, D, and then a short E, or that the X wave was in progress as likely either a flat correction with an A, A, B, C for an expanded flat, uh, and then C of the X all the way up here. Or that the X wave was likely taking the shape of a complex triangle that had a running triangle to be precise, where you had the A coming in short, the B was in progress, and you would see a C, a D, and an E, which had to be zigzags given the complexity of this B. We also talked about the possibility that this wasn't an X, it was some kind of B structure, and this was the, the uh, A. However, that felt quite unlikely given this new low, uh, because if this is a three-wave sequence, which it certainly looks like a zigzag, then uh, you know the only possible ABC structure would be a flat family correction, and you can't have anything but a zigzag in the B position. So that, that, that invalidated that possibility. So the only way to count that would have to call this a five wave motive sequence, likely some kind of leading diagonal, which has a pretty tough count, if you recall, because you'd be almost forced to alternate between five and three wave sequences in the actionary wave positions. Anyway, uh, we're not going to rehash that, that today, but what we will do is talk about how deep might we go. Are we going to keep waiting in this crypto kiddie pool around here or are we really going to go into deep waters and visit you know a low somewhere around here or even here whenever there are multiple competing roughly equal probability paths the best thing you can do as an analyst is to look at as many tools in your toolkit as, as you have and try to figure out if there's confluence that points you in one direction or the other. So that's what I thought we would do today and focus on. If you, if you see uh, the x-axis here, you can see that I've pulled price all the way to the beginning of 2017. Um, I mean, you could go further back, but I, I just don't think you gain much in analysis. You can see the VPVR here, um, which records transactional history by price level. The bigger the, the, the histogram here, uh, these bars, the more significant that price level was as defined by transactional volume, right? And obviously there was a lot of accumulation around this level, a little bit of a break here, perhaps a, a corrective sequence that you can't see on the chart, and then some more impulsive here, and then some more here. And these points, these little pockets of air, uh, generally mean that there's very little support. As you can see, the drop, the precipitous drop from here all the way down to 5.9k, and then a rebound came on uh, price levels that had very little transactional history, right? And then since then, the majority of the correction we've been vacillating between this new low and this high of around 11.9 thousand or whatever it was, and you can see, you know, that that there is significant 
transactional volume support at those levels, which explains some of the zigzag uh, price patterns. And as you go down to this local, local to this 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 uh, price range here, this local point of control, uh, that's the point at which there was the most fighting between the bulls and the bears. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six different, maybe even seven different crosses of that level up and down. And as you go lower, that it's less contested, you know, to the point where it was one, two, and three just a little while ago. And now at this new low, just, just two points. Uh, to go find the other uh, pivot off of significant pivot uh, at this price level, you'd have to go all the way to here before the correction even started. So we're kind of reaching this territory where we're about to enter no man's land for a little bit here. And if we do, it's, in my opinion, highly likely that we're going to dip all the way to somewhere around this level, at least from a volume profile analysis perspective. The other tool that any good analyst should have in their toolkit is the Fibonacci uh, price level. So let's, uh, let's pull the Fib, and I'm going to do it from zero because of the possibility that we might be correcting the entire impulsive sequence from there. Now, I can't literally put zero in for whatever reason uh, the system won't take it, but this is it might as well be just as good at 0 0.01. And you can see that this level here that I alluded to earlier that has some, some uh, transactional history in terms of VP, VR significance, it lines up perfectly to the 786, which is obviously a very important Fibonacci level. As far as algo targets, uh, Sam pulled this one, uh, which I, I agree with him that there's, there's, this seems to be in play here. This pull right here that gets you, uh, the first major algo targets around 5140 or something, call it 5150 to 5200 ish. Um, and I think this is significant, even though it did, you know, it did cross a little beyond the 618, in that uh, it's the fib pull off of this halfway back price level. Sorry. So this one hits 50 from, from this important pivot down here. You can see it hits 50 right there, right? So that's, that's the reason why this one's significant. Uh, but this, this one doesn't give us much guidance. It says we might go down to 51-ish, um, but that's not very confident with either Fibonacci or this VPVR a significant price level histogram. That doesn't mean that it can't get, that, that it'll, it'll have to go lower than that or that it would even have to get there. It's just something to note. And then the next one below happens at around this level, which is below um, this, this level where there's confluence between the 786 and, and the volume profile. Because of the funky shape and quite aggressively downward shape of, of the sequence from here all the way down to here, you'll, you'll struggle to find a credible 50% retracement or even a 618 retracement. There's one to be had around here, very small one here. Uh, I'm probably not even going to draw it correctly because I'm so zoomed out, but um, this one would have us the first one would be around 5,500, the minus 236, and then the minus 618 would be at 5,130, and then there's 1618 that would take us all the way down to like 4,040 or 4,100-ish level, right? So there is some confluence between this one, although it's a small pull, uh, and these two levels. I'm going to take it off and just remember that there is because the screen's getting a little cluttered. I'm going to take this one off as well. So there is some uh, algo target confluence at the third major algo target from this small pull here would have us reach right around this level. Okay, just just note that. What about Elliot? Well, in this scenario that we have some kind of expanded expanded flat X or I guess it can't be a B. So expanded flat X in progress. It can't be a B because it's not a zigzag, and this is very likely three-wave. Um, I guess it could be a B if, if you 
want to count this as five wave. I, I think that's challenging, but nevertheless, whether B or X, uh, the expanded flat seems quite probable as far as shape goes in geometry, where you got the sharp A, you know, the more sideways B, where this wave and this wave are very close in, in uh, length. Uh, and then the C wave up. So, if it were an expanded flat, where would be where would the uh, B wave stop relative to the A? If it were to be a classic expanded flat, well, we know it's around one two seven two. Call it one hundred and thirty percent ish is textbook. So let's measure that from here to here, back up here. You'd had, you know, 1272, so right around here, 4300 and something, which is very close to the 786 and this significant level, would be the ending point of a classic expanded flat. The most probable range for the B to end relative to the A. So that's interesting confluence to note as well. The other uh, measurement we can do relative to that is. Well, what obviously this is a three-wave structure. I don't care how you label it, whether it's WXY or ABC or whatever you want to call this thing. It's it's clearly three-wave. You'd have to be blind not to not to acknowledge that. So this third leg, whether a Y or a C, by the guideline of equality, should measure 100% of the A or very close, right? So what is 100%? 100% would be. here to here. You can see the dotted line right at, right at the proposed B, or I guess X is possible too. And 100% gets you once again down to this level where it's low 4,000s. So you've got significant technical confluence around this level. You've got what is very likely a support level from a volume profile perspective relative to all the transactional history from 2017 onward. You'd have to acknowledge that's significant. Uh, then you've got the Fibonacci 786, which is covered by this orange measurement, so it's hard to see. But let me maybe move this price here. Well, it still covers it. But you can see it here, the 786. Then you've got 100% extension uh, of this structure off of here to measure this one, the end of this one, that gets you to the mid 4000s. Then you've got the classic expanded flat measurement about about 130% if this is the A and this is the B that ends you right around that level too, give or take, you know, 100 or 200 bucks. And there's also one, one possible other measurement that's significant. Well, if you do want to call this a five-wave sequence, um, I think it's, again, very challenging. But if you do, and you want to call this the second very tiny and brief, uh, from a time sequence perspective, component of a three-wave corrective structure, then you'd want to measure this from the height of all-time high all the way to this 5.9K low to here. And given that 100% would take you into negative territory, you, you'd, you'd want to see somewhere uh, between 50 and the 618, right? And, well, 50 is here and 618 is here. This level, the 786 level, where, where we've identified all this other technical confluence, is splits the middle. Okay, So that's another uh, point of technical confluence. As you can see, this is th this this Low 4,000 level appears to be one to study. Again, I'm not saying it gets there, but especially when you're considering the bear case and, and wanting to be aware of all possibilities, you got to look at this. So let's look at it. All right, Bitcoin one hour time frame. What we're trying to do here is, does the micro support the macro analysis we just did? Remember, we thought that around 4,200, give or take, 100 or 200 bucks, was a pretty significant level where there was a lot of technical confluence. There was the volume profile support level. 
there was the 786 from zero all the way to the all-time high. There was the most likely length of an expanded flats B relative to the A at around 130%. There was the 100% projection of either the C or the Y wave um, off of the X or the W or the A wave. Uh, and there was the 50 to 618 level from the all-time high all the way down to 5.9K and then uh, off of the uh, the move from 5.9K upwards, whether you call that a B or an X wave or whatever, up to you, right? So all those things pointed us to 4,200-ish level or so being significant. There was one other thing I forgot. Uh, the algo pull from, I think it was... Uh, this level to this level, yeah, this being to the tick, and then having a 618 second algo target that was right around, you know, a little higher, but you know, around that level as well. So just a lot of technical confluence there. So let's figure out if this micro, meaning from, from this uh, last high to the low of the correction, 5.8K, whether that supports that price level. Now before I get into this, remember one thing. One of the accounts that we had, which I, I thought measured quite well, had this triangle as a possibility, which was an X-wave triangle, completed, right? You had the A, B, C being 618 of the A, almost I mean, very close, then a D, which was to the tick, 618 of this B, and then the short E, but the short E um, counted perfectly as a zigzag, where you had this impulse move up with a deep four, one, two, three, four, five, and then a flat correction is the B, and then one, two, three, four, five is the C. It was, it was a classic zigzag. Now, it can absolutely be a zigzag that's part of a larger corrective structure here. It could even be a triangle. That was one of the things we talked about a couple of weeks ago where this was A, B, C, D, E, or some kind of W, X, Y where the W is a, is a zigzag. I acknowledge those are possibilities, but it doesn't matter. My point is because this structure right here is either contains a zigzag or is a zigzag, and then it's impulsive down after that, there's a couple of ways to count this move because this triangle or this zigzag or whatever the hell this is almost bisects the entire move from here to here very cleanly. It doesn't quite bisect it, but I, I, since I think this is not done yet on the way down, it's a good intermediary step before the completion of this last leg after the completion of this first leg. So we can count this move from here to here and still going as an impulse in progress or as a three-wave corrective structure in progress. Whether you want to call that an ABC or a WXY, that's up to you. But we're going to do it both ways to prove the point that that macro high-level analysis that we did to arrive at, at, you know, low to mid 4,000s as a price point that could very well be where Bitcoin ends up before it moves up uh, is valid, uh, even at the micro level. Now, before I move on, I want to say one thing about this structure. Uh, I don't care who you are, there's, there's no way you can gain much confidence on your count. If you're a skilled Elliotician, what you usually do when you see an impulsive sequence in progress is you try to anchor your count based on corrective structures. You know, if you find a triangle by itself, wonderful, that's got to be a four. You know, if, if you find a very sharp uh, corrective structure early on, that's very likely a two. And if that two alternates with some kind of sideways pattern as a four that's substantially below uh, from a price level perspective, the, the, the beginning of the two, then it's probably the three that's in between them, sandwiched in between those two correct, alternating corrective structures. Here, you don't get any of that. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it doesn't pop out at you from the chart. The, you look at the geometry of this thing and you say, man, what the hell is it, right? That's why it can very easily be an impulse and it could very easily be a corrective sequence. The question is, can it very easily be completed? 
And I think the answer is no. It's very difficult for me, at least, to, to get this move here as complete uh, because there's no way that I can count it where the channel works particularly well or there's no way that I can count it where the wave ratios and the retracement levels make a lot of sense to me. doesn't mean it can't be done, but I think it measures better as a move in progress, whether corrective or impulsive. Now, the other reason is, zooming in here a little bit, this just does not pass the right look test as, a, as an impulse here, guys. I mean, this is about as clearly three wave as it gets. You've got this big green move up, sideways fuckery here, and then another smaller but substantial green move up, very sharp. I mean, if that's not three wave, I don't know what is. Right? I mean, it, I, I know some guys count this as five wave, but you, you're faking the funk, guys. You go dive d deep in there and figure out whether that's five or three, and it, it would be very difficult for you to say say that's five. Okay. Um, and also, this very deep two, if that's, that is what it is, did it even reach, it might have reached a new price low. Yeah, so it did reach a new price low, right? So there's just no way this is, I mean, this is obviously three then. Three, three, and this looks like five up to me. One, two, three, four, one last leg remaining for the five. Um, looks very much like a flat correction. Um, does it measure as such? Let's see. We're expecting the C leg to be between, you know, 1272 and 1618 or so. And what do you know? It's like 1272 almost to the tick at the last spike here. Moves down, it'll probably go end right around this level, right? So all that to say this is still in progress to me. So then what is it? And how deep is it going to go? Is it almost done? Well, we're about to find out. So when we encounter a move like this that's almost visually impossible to, uh, to peg without some measurements, I basically default to channeling because it's just the most fundamental nature of, um, of waves or measured moves or wh whatever you want to call them that, that they travel in channels. Now, they don't have to, but they very often do. So because the retracements don't give me any help with the wave count, I'm going to start channeling this puppy to see where we end up, right? And our members know how to channel properly. We had a tutorial on it uh, just last week on how to do it per the Elliott Wave guidelines. The one this week is going to elaborate on that and talk about some nuanced observations that I've made that, that significantly, in my opinion, enhance the guideline. Uh, by the way, the guideline only applies to impulses, and this other channeling technique um, applies to anything. But since this is an impulse, we're going to default to the uh, Elliott Wave Standard Guideline, which says, as a quick refresher, that you should create a temporary channel that connects the endpoints of the 1 and the 3. You pull it to the endpoint of the 2 to project the 4. Once the 4 comes in, you redraw the channel from the endpoints of the 2 and the 4. You pull it to the end of the 3 to project the 5. So, uh, one thing before I do that is I've found that guideline to be iffy. I'm not saying it doesn't work. You should do it. But I've found that the projection of the 4 in particular, more than half the time for me, the four travels outside of the channel boundary. So I've found it to be a, a not so good predictor of where the four lands. Um, I almost always expect the four to break the channel for me to have to redraw the temporary channel into the final channel. The other thing I'll say is when projecting the five, I've found that the median line of the channel plays as significant, if not more, of a significant role as the boundary. But I'll talk about that in a second. So this move here impossible to argue that it can't be a one, right? I mean, it's so clearly five wave. One, two, three, four, five. Or an alternate count where you have it leading diag is A, B, C, one, two, A, B, C, three, four, five, right? 
I don't care how you count it. We don't care about those particulars. This as a one and a two, very difficult to argue. The other thing is after the two, look at how sharp and aggressive this move is. It's a textbook three in terms of personality and behavior. It's just so aggressive, right? Um, I'm pretty high volume too, I would, I would imagine. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, relative to what was going on to the left of it, yeah, pretty high volume. So this is a one, a two, and this is a three, and this is a four makes a ton of sense to me. So let's channel that to see whether it plays. End of the one, end of the three, end of the two. That's your temporary channel. Uh, you tip, the, book, the textbook suggests that you use this boundary line to project the four. Like I said, I, I've found that to almost never apply. Uh, majority of the time, I see the four breaking out, um, which makes a ton of sense because four tends to be a sideways pattern that consumes more time than the two. So how can it stay contained in the channel? If that's that's just an inconsistency in the guideline that I, I've never favored. So I use a different technique, but whatever. Let's 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 use this one. Uh, two and four, and a three to project the five, and you pull it, and sure enough, um, sure enough, the five lands right around here, which is it's not at the boundary line, but like I said, I've found the median line to play as significant, if not a more significant role. Now, one visual check that you can make to see whether the median line is in play is has it been a significant median line for the entire impulsive sequence and it sure as hell has for the one it's contained the whole move here and then bisects the distance between the top half and the bottom half of the three same thing for the four and you can see here just you know price is moving up and down up and down between that bond that, that median line so um, those of you who are her members know how much we like the Andrews median line principles and I want to remind you that a channel is very close to a pitchfork. A pitchfork is a channel. You're just picking the pivots, right? So I've found a lot of the uh, uh, median line principles to apply to channels, median lines as well, but we're digressing. So this to me channels perfectly as a five wave move. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to go into two degrees, so I'm going to start Putting some temporary uh, markings here of two different degrees. I've got the micro, and I'm going to do the sub menuet in a second here. Uh, let's move. So the sub menuet in orange will be the higher degree. The micro will be the lower degree. Okay. So so far we've got. A one. A two, a three, a four, and a five that we can get some confidence behind. You know, it can start a count. Uh, the other thing I, I want to say is when you have something like this that's all over the place and you don't have a visual anchor to start guiding your count, always start left to right. I see people starting to count like here because this looks interesting or here because this looks like it might be the end and they count backwards. You can't do that. The story gets told left to right and you should count it left to right. Uh, because how the hell do you know what this is without any context of what, what came to the left of it? Um, okay, just one final check to see if this measures well as a three and a five. So we would expect the three to be, you know, uh, bigger than the one, uh, ideally one, six, one, eight, but one, two, seven, two or something like that is perfectly fine too. And we do get 1272 around there. And we would expect the 5 to be roughly equal to the to the 1 when the 3 isn't super extended, which it isn't. And what do we get? Let's see. The 4. Yeah, to the tick. Literally 100% of the, this 1. So to me, done data, baby. This is a 1. That's not a one. I've never seen a one. Okay. The only argument against that being a one is, well, this is a light two. But the counter for me to that is, well, it does break the channel. And where is there a deep two or deep anything here at this degree? There isn't. So you got to start your count somewhere. Uh, not only does it break the channel, but it's also clearly a zigzag, 
which is a sharp corrective structure, most typical of the two. So let's put that here. Now we're getting somewhere as far as this, this uh, impulsive count. Now we're going to reuse a lot of this um, for the three sideways count. Uh, sorry, the uh, corrective count where it's an A, B, C, or W, X, Y. So that's why I'm, I'm starting with the impulse. Um, remember, this is the proposed E of the W, or the X triangle, right? The short E. So this is a zigzag. We know that. Now we can use that to our advantage because this looks to me like a very well-channeled impulsive move. You've got this overlapping sequence of small moves here that's probably a leading diag. Then you've got an aggressive three. Something that looks like either it's an expanded flat. Well, no, it wouldn't be an expanded flat because it doesn't... It would, it would be um, some kind of sideways like a W, X, Y, or a triangle, A, B, C, D, E, something like that. But some kind of sideways um, structure here that qualifies very well um, as a 4. And then this move down here, but looks, looks like it could be uh, an ending diag to put the 5 of this little move here. I guess it's not so little of this move here. Now, what is this? Is it a 3? Well, it's very short to be a three if this is the one. Most typically, a, a, a three, you'd expect it to be at least 100%, if not 1618. And I think that's almost, well, let's just measure it. It's got to be smaller than the, than the one. Yeah, it's smaller by quite a bit. This would be 100% of the one, right? So I'm going to call that the one of the three. If you want to argue with me and say, well, you know, that's, that's, that's a three, then... I don't think it can be because this is this this one's bigger. This three is short, and then what is this? You, you know, is this a possible five? Let's see. Three can't be the shortest, so uh, no, it can't be. See, it can't be a three. So now we know that if this is a one and it is such a clean one that how can it not be? Then this is the one of the three. Okay, so again, we're going down a degree here. We're, we're counting. So this is the one of the three. Now, this is a substantial one of the three. Something to keep in mind, because what does that mean? Well, we'd expect the three of the three to be even more substantial, given what I just said about the personality and, and, and lengths of threes, right? Now, we know this can easily be a two, because we counted it. This is the proposed E of the X triangle. I'm not going to do that again. I, I will acknowledge it can be other things. Like, the, like I said, this, this zigzag could be a component of this entire corrective structure, which could itself be a triangle. A, B, C, D, E. That's possible. But for this count, this plays perfectly as a two. It's a sharp pattern. It's a zigzag. It's not a deep retracement, but in the context of this aggressive move, it's, it's meaningful. It's meaningful. Gets to 50% or ish. That's not bad, right? Um, and it looks like these algo targets, you know, this 236 and the 618, certainly have roles here, uh, which kind of gives you a clue that it's a significant pivot that um, you should expect out of a two. Meaning it's not, you know, this in and of itself isn't some smaller degree part of, a, 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 of this move here, this one or this three. This is a self-contained move of the same degree as this one and this following three. That's what I mean by that. So then, I mean, this channels so well that what's the point of channeling this thing? You can visually channel it too. So then let's use channeling again um, to see whether we can peg the three of this three, this, this orange three. Remember, the circled yellow uh, numbers are, are one degree lower than the orange. So once again, uh, we look for the one and the three first. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, three. This looks like it could be a three, right? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, five. All this is the three. Okay. 
one, two, all this to three, four, and possibly a five. That that seems like a pretty decent hypothesis, right? Now, this is all of the three, so I have to actually do it one one degree lower. So we're gonna go to white and sub micro. Okay. So my point is one, two, three, four, five. Now I acknowledge this is a new low. Okay. Um, but this to me looks so three wave that I think this is some kind of expanded flat in progress. Okay. So I'm going to count this as, as, as the three, but we'll get there in a second. My point is this, this three measures uh, or uh, counts quite well. One, two, three, four, five of this three, right? Even the subdivisions count well. One, two, three, four, five, you know, et cetera. Um, I think it counts less well as one, two, three of the same degree, four, five. Sorry. Um, this is why I'm getting into these micro details is because this is a competing count for that. This is a competing alternate count to that. And that plays too. But to me, the white count counts better. Uh, let's channel it to, 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 to verify that, right? So the guideline says 1 to the 3, pull it up to the 2. Um, and then you project the 4 on the boundary line. Now, again, I, I've, I've found this to break all the time, so this is no surprise. Um, so then you go two or four, end of four, end of two, to then the three to project the five. Right? This is the final Elliott channel, which is the more meaningful one. The temporary one is just a, is a visual guide as you navigate an impulse. And I mean, the five lands right on this freaking median line, right, right below it. So to me, this is this this whole thing as a five wave move that is um, the three all of it, and this being the four it makes more sense than the other way around. The other thing is, what would we expect this 3 to be relative to this 1? Well, let's see. Let's measure it to see where we get. It's the 1 off the 2. We would expect the 3 to be, again, at least 1, 2, 7, 2. And it, it's on the dot, 1, 2, 7, 2. Look at that. To the tick. Literally to the tick. Now, if this was the three here, as some people have it, yes, it's a little bit greater than the 100%, but just by a wick. Which is more credible to you? This well-channeled move that ends at 1272 or this thing here? Where the four is less substantial in time traveled or, or just about the same as the two. This four... To me, especially because fours tend to be, I don't know, I would say a good rule of thumb is they cover 50% more, more, more uh, time than twos do. They're much more sideways typically, sometimes 100% or more, uh, that this four is of a smaller degree than this two, I would say. Right? So once again, you've got a very likely three here. And the other reason why I like the three is, remember, we kept this measurement of this flat okay uh, as the sea leg 
typically coming in between 1272 and 1618, so right around here. Remember, we kept, we, kept, we kept this from the prior analysis that we did where this was A, B, C, and I had you know, a five wave, a little move up here to put the five of the C in to complete the four. Now look at this. What do we know from Elliott uh, guidelines? We know that about fours is that fours after extended threes, which this three is longer than the one, so qualifies, okay? They tend to travel within the price span of the lower degree four. So this four tends to travel within the price span of this four of the three. Let me just visually put it in so you know what the hell I'm talking about. So the, this price span right here, uh, the four is expected to end around the upper boundary, the, the, the terminus of the four of the smaller degree. This is a higher degree four, this is a smaller degree four, right? For threes, for extended threes. And what do we have? First of all, note the significance of this channel median line. It stopped this impulse. I mean, it was a freight train, runaway freight train, and it hit a brick wall at the median line. I don't think that's coincidence. Okay, But then it goes down, and we should expect another push up, test of the median line, maybe cross it, or maybe double top for the four, and head it back down. So, so far, if not visually, at least by counting and applying the guidelines and, 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 and the channels, um, we're looking like this is, I'm, I'm gaining more confidence in this count. Now remember, this is all still the three of, of the, the orange, this degree, submenuet. Now what would you expect the three to be relative to this high degree one? Let's, let's do that measurement. I'm going to pull it off here to the side because it, it's the, the uh, chart's getting a little cluttered, but so this is the one, end point of the two. We would expect it to end around 1618, which is this level. Well, look at that. Let me just mark that here so you can see the, the light gray line corresponding to this 1618 projection. We would expect this four to end around here and this five to at least cover this ground, right? Especially with such light retracements, relatively aggressive move, I would expect the, f the five of the three, remember, of the three to be around here. Now, I'm going to take this off because you guys can see 1618 for this A, B, C, the C being 1618 of the A, you know, the four, the price term is being right around here. So we're expecting the four to land, you know, right around this level, okay, right around the price terminus of this lower degree four, which is around 1618, a little higher than 1618 for this C. Um, so then, what should this five be? Well, one of the ways I, I like to do it is um, take the, the one from the zero all the way to the three. So the origin of the one all the way to the end of the three, stick it on the end of the four and project out about 618. That's the most likely level for, for a five. Or use the guideline of equality. And, you know, the, for a three that's not super extended, which this one isn't, um, the one should be roughly equal to the five. So we can use both approaches and see where we go. So this is the one. Assuming the four ends right around here, 100% would have you land right here. 52.65. Well, what do you know? right on 1618 of the higher degree th for the three relative to the one. It's called confluence. Now, let's do it the other way. Um, let's do it zero to three. Well, zero to three is here. Remember that being the five of the three. 618 gets you a little lower, you know, 50, 50 90. It's a little lower than that, but you know, not, not, not crazy. To, to, for it to go down that low, uh, given this uh, 1618, this 3 being around 5300, right? Remember, this is just a guideline. It's, it's almost never going to be literally 1618. It could be a little lower, a little higher. So, but let's use the guideline of equality um, because this 3 isn't super extended. So that seems like a very reasonable guideline. Um, now we're projecting out a lot of moves that haven't happened because this four has got to complete around here for all these things to apply. But my point being, can that 4,200 level that we analyzed at a macro 
level play. Well, so far so good, right? Um, we've got a three in place. Now, what did I say about the fours? Well, the four is usually for an extended three, which now this one would be at 1618 of the one, uh, tend to travel towards the price span of the lower degree four, which would now be the circle four. So from here to here, right around this level somewhere, um, let's just be conservative and say it goes all the way up to here, the four, right? Some kind of flat correction or triangle or something goes all the way to the four. And then the five gets put in. Well, using the same two techniques, let's project the five of the highest degree. Guideline of equality gets you to. Now, because this is 1618, I prefer the 0 to 3 method. But, you know, guideline of equality still, still, still works. But I've found, you know, with more aggressive threes that 0 to 3 is a better predictor. But let's just do it both ways. So this is the 1. And project it off the 4. 100% gets you to 47.82. Now, if you use 0 to 3, you get 618 is around 4,000, 3959. So, let, you know, let's, let's split the distance. Let's call it roughly 4,200 and change, which is exactly the level that we thought was significant at the macro level. Again, this has to come in, this has to come in here, this has to come in here. It's had a lot of assumptions, if, thens, and buts, but uh, the point of this is not to literally predict the future, but it's rather to say, is that macro analysis that we did valid? Does, does it actually play? And it sure looks like, from a impulse count perspective, it does play. One, two, three, four, five. Super clean. Now, this would probably be more sideways and... This is illustrative. This is not literally where the price would go. Okay. So I said there's two ways to count it. There's this way, and then there's the ABC or WXY way. Well, let's look at it that way. We can reuse a lot of the work uh, for the same. Well, let's keep the channels in. So what I would say is if you want to count this as some kind of zigzag combo, this works really well as an X. So then, I would move, basically I would create this five wave move here would be the A of the Y. This five wave move here would be the A, this would be the B, this would be the C. So let's label it so, so it's not confusing. I'm going, to make, I'm going to make this one lower degree here. Okay. So this, this would be the A, B, C. Remember how well channeled this was and it was a perfect five wave move? Okay. This would be the X. W, X, Y somewhere down here. Okay, no argument so far, right? This is clearly 5, this is clearly 3, this is clearly 5. A, B, C, W. This is very possibly X as a zigzag. The most likely uh, X for a double zigzag would be an X. Now, look at how light this X is as a retracement. That's why I don't love this as a double zigzag or even an A, B, C. It's, I mean, it doesn't even clear 3, A, 2, right? So I prefer the impulse count. Um, which makes the flat correction possibility that we're on the B. This is this whole thing being the C of the B of a flat X, very likely. Uh, that that is where I'm leaning towards. It's potentially my primary count, but um, nevertheless, you know, you can't ignore the other one. So this 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 uh, it's a light retracement for any kind of corrective combo, but nevertheless, it plays. It's light. <laughs> 
but it plays. Then you've got one, two, three, four, five. This is A. Let's say that this B ends right around this level of the four, which, by the way, I. Whoops, hold on. Let's see, we down here. I was going to pull a fib and I forgot I hadn't clicked the last label. Um, look at that, 50%. 50%. For this four, okay? Uh, the reason why that's important is the most likely retracement level for a zigzags B is around 50%. Now, 3A2 is possible, a little lighter is possible, 618 is possible, a little more is possible. It starts getting suspect at around 786 as a zigzag B still flies. But, you know, uh, by far the most likely level, you should expect it around 50%, and we do get that here. So all the analysis that we did of this as a uh, flat correction, A, B, C up here, still applies to the zigzag possibility. And again, I want to note the, the algo target here, 45 something. Um, okay. Um, and for the same reasons that these channels that I drew were interesting from an impulse perspective, they are interesting from a double zigzag perspective because you would expect the B wave of a zigzag to break the channel of the A, and certainly does here. And you would expect the X wave of a double zigzag combo to break the channel of, we covered this already in, in past videos, but of, of the first W, and it certainly does here, right? So, so far, looking pretty, pretty solid here as, as a double zigzag, with the exception of this light retrace. Then you've got one, two, three, four, five. This breaks out of the channel as a B, and then you would put a C or a Y in. Now, where would the C or the Y go? The most likely length is some Fibonacci relationship of the A. The guideline of equality says most likely 100%, but it could be 618, could be 50%, um, usually 100% or 618, or 1618. So this is the A. It's projecting the B to around here. 100% gets you to 4780. I believe it was right around that algo target that we pulled, wasn't it? Um, hold on. Here. Um, not quite. That algo was it was forty something. Uh, but but it could be you know it could be um, also as deep as one six one eight. So even as a three-wave move down, this certainly counts quite well to validate the point that that 4,000 low hundreds to 4,000 mid, you know, mid 4,000s, like 42 to 44, around there, give or take, is potentially a very valid next stop for Bitcoin. As always, I hope you got something out of this analysis. I certainly don't do it for my health. I try to help out. Uh, I tend to dive deep because I get to do this once a week, and so I have a lot to say. And there's much more to talk about with regards to bear counts than, than there are for uh, bull counts. So the videos have, have tended to be a little longer. I know that that gets mixed reviews. Some folks like the detail. Uh, some folks want more, and some folks want the five minute, is it going up or down? And the folks who want the five minutes, is it, is it up or down, is, should never tune into any of my videos because it's never going to be that way. It's going to be detailed analysis on technical indicators that we use to try to develop a trading strategy around this. Now, all this analysis gives you some pretty clear views as to what you should be doing as a trader. We're not going to talk about all the details in this video. We've run out of time, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out what some good possible trades are here. Very high risk re reward to risk ratios coming up because the number of valid technical counts has decreased very substantially. 
in the past week as a result of this new low and in particular over the past few days as the development of this uh, structure that looks so much like a flat almost textbook uh, has transpired so happy trading i hope you guys are all profitable and i'll see you next week